Oh. oh I could bend down. Oh. Greetings. It's me, Liv. Today, we're going to do something really cool and really fun. What's that, you say? Ah, yes. We're going to be following a vintage sewing pattern. Oh my god, I totally did like an earthbending move without even realizing it. <laughs> so I'm glad that you're here today. Today, we're going to be following a vintage sewing pattern. I'm excited. Somebody actually requested this to me months and months and months ago. I think over a year by now. So, if you're still around, this one's for you. I got this super cool 1970s vintage sewing pattern Whoa. for a jumpsuit. So on par. I love it. And I got it off of Facebook Marketplace. I think it is already cut. I haven't dug in to see what the contents are yet or if it has all the contents, but... I hope that it's cut to my size. I am a little bit worried about the sizing because I think my body isn't typically the standard, a standardized size, meaning my upper body is a different size than my lower body. So we might have to work around those obstacles. But I think we could make it work. This is a super cool pattern from 1975. It was only a dollar fifty back in the day. For inflation, it's probably like 15 bucks. <laughs> I did the math and turns out I was wrong. It's only 750. Also got this super pretty kind of flannelly plaid fabric and I got it from Facebook Marketplace. This video is brought to you by Facebook Marketplace. You could get other people's sh that they don't want for cheap. <laughs> this lady actually sold me a whole bundle of fabrics for only five dollars so technically this is less than a dollar and this is like yardage this guy yards honey yards I mean meters it's got meters we're going to be correct here not use our garbage American measurement system I don't know what accent that is and if you want to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification button. That was a really bad idea. Oh my god. Okay, we're starting off by digging into this packet. And let me tell you, there's a lot of papers here. So all the pieces were cut out, that means somebody made this before, which I think makes it cooler, but makes my job right now harder. <laughs> if you look here at the sizes, I'm a size 10 in the bust, a size 14 in the waist, and a size 16 in the hip, so oh, I don't know how I'm going to do that. Let's do some reading, vintage style. Ho, Romeo, fold fronts on facing lines, right sides together, turn facings inside, fold them in on the facing lines, and press, press deep, press deep into the burning desire of my deepest love. For your facing. That is all. <sighs> so, if you have a question about sewing, you can write Meg Carter the McCall Pattern Company at 230 Park Avenue, New York, New York. Maybe I could write them a letter if they still have that address. <laughs> Dear Meg, what 
do I do if I can't read? I'm 19, my name is Jared. Love, live. Wait, I mean Jared. Wait, what does that say? Hello, you've reached a shrimpin' checkpoint. Are you big shrimpin'? Spendin' G's? I then started ironing out the actual pattern pieces because it turns out you can do that. This has probably been in the thing for at least 30 years. Well, I hope, because that'd be really cool. I want to know so bad who made this in the past. I wonder if her name was Gertrude. So what I might do is just cut it huge, just like cut it huge and then take it in. I followed the instructions for the pattern to make the top longer because I figured I need the most length I could get to not get the most righteous wedgie. So I just extended the pattern a bit with tissue paper of my own. Okay. So my chanky plan of action here is to cut out one side, then scooch it over two inches and cut out the other side of the pattern and smooth it in with the armhole so that everything else on the pattern fits. My neck, my back. You know the rest. Ugh, I'm being a floor troll today. And let me tell you, I'm not cut out for this kind of work anymore. I'm too old, ripe age of 23. It is now much later and I am in much warmer clothes because my dad is the epitome of don't touch me thermostat. Energy, energy. So I was looking and I think I want to do some accent pieces in this fabric. It's just an old pair of jeans I had that's kind of like this maroon corduroy looking stuff. So yeah, let's do that and see how it looks. The next morning. I got new energy. I feel like a spring champion. I cannot explain what happens next other than I got suddenly obsessed with pretending my table was a DJ booth. And that, my friends, is how you end up with this. Hello there. I'm back. You didn't know I was gone, but it had been a couple days. You see, I am the worst person at starting multiple projects and not finishing any of them at one specific time. I'm here to work on it today. Alright, what was I doing? Oh yeah, I was uh, making a jumpsuit. Okay, here I am interfacing that. 
And congratulations, comrade. You just made it to the 10 minute video mark where I actually start sewing. Is that a flaw? Oh my God. That looks like a grape. I'm gonna go hang out with Dylan and all I finished today was the pockets. Um, it doesn't seem like much, but it felt like a lot of work. Okay, bye, see you tomorrow. And here's an example of how most of our interactions go. Welcome back to the factory. Let's see what's on the agenda for today. Okay, so it's kind of funny. Today we're actually starting at number two. <laughs> and all of what we did so far was part one. Oh my God. That's like one of those homework questions where it's like, just do problems one through three. And then it's one A, one B, one C, one D, one E, one F, one G, one H, one. I, 1J, 1K, 1L, 1M, 1N, 1O, 1P. I am getting triggered just looking at this because this is the butt floss part if you are a long bodied individual and don't fit into regular one piece items like myself. So we're gonna see. We're gonna see. I hope you feel consoled by the fact that I'm about to stab this with a needle about five bajillion times. And then hopefully it'll work out. Okay. Okay, now that this is done, it's time to add the muff. <laughs> Yo! Whoa! This is the yoke. It's the part that goes over your shoulder and some garments, instead of attaching the seam at the shoulder, they have a piece to kind of buff the two fronts and backs together. And I just learned that on this project, so I'm sharing it with you guys now. Okay. You know, I've actually grown really fond of ironing nowadays and really think it makes my clothes look extra nice. Okay, I don't know if it's late or what, but as I'm watching this, my fingers look like spiders and I don't know, it's just kind of creeping me out and maybe I need to stop editing for the day. I've been at this like all day and all yesterday. Oh my God, look at that spider. It's so derpy. Oh my God, it worked. I can move. It's not even that tight. Okay, when I do that, there's a little bit of a wedgy action. <laughs> so no raising the roof here. Oh! oh I could bend down! Oh! <laughs> Don't worry, there was no harm done. Now we're in the final stretch and I'm putting on that collar, baby. This part was a little bit confusing on the instructions, but I just sewed a little line at the bottom of both the laps so that there would be a flap, which is actually called a lap, to cover where the crotch seam ends. A lap. <laughs> okay guys, I'm editing this and I can't tell what I was supposed to be wording to the camera here. And I was supposed to be wording something because the music was on and it didn't feel like turning it off. So I don't know what my brain just said. Okay, just move your lips and to me, it says, elbow stinks. <laughs> uh. Now I'm working on taking it in at my midsection because it was just too baggy for my liking. 
Once I finished all the facings, yes, there were so many words named facing in this instruction, I decided to iron them down with some magic fuse tape thingy-majig, just because I didn't like them flapping all over the place. <laughs> oh man. I then started making my belt, but I had to take a well-deserved break and go on a roller skate session with my mom. I then made this really long fettuccine, and it's perfect to use for a belt. I couldn't decide what type of belt to make, so I asked my Instagram, and they chose this thick and chunky gold clasp that I had from a thrifted belt in my stash, and I think it turned out pretty perfect. Snacks. I also wanted to make the belt adjustable because you know you want it tight like you want to snatch your waist but you don't want it so tight that you won't have the option to breathe or like sit down so I used this little figure eight kind of hardware thing and made one of those adjustable belts it reminds me of a softball belt but yeah okay I hope that makes sense yes it's a different day yes I am not done but I had to go get these buttons because I decided I needed some. Oh yeah, I'm so close to finishing this. For the lower half of the jumpsuit, I sewed Velcro on it because I didn't want buttons to be below the belt. I think that would look weird. And then I sewed some button and button holes on the top above the belt, all the way up to the chest area. And ooh, that turned out so good. All viewers, please aboard. Departure to Yards. I wasn't recording the ironing schmiring, you know. X one W wait one X wait Ooh my quarantine brain can think <laughs> Oof. Let's go! Woo! 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 Bet you I could box jump my bed. Oh! Got it. Watch out! <laughs>